Welcome to today's edition of Daytime Dialogues. It is my great pleasure today to welcome Rabbi Ephraim Rimmel. For those of you who don't know Rabbi Rimmel, and I can't imagine anyone who doesn't know him, uh, he and his family made Aliyah from Chicago a couple of years back when he was baby. And uh, he lives in Israel all of these years, thank God. He was a member of the Yeshiva University Torah Metzion Kolel in Chicago from 2010 to 2014, where the entire community of Chicago gets, got to know him and his late wife, Tzipi, Allah Shalom, uh, because of all of their work that they did in Chicago. And they really had a tremendous impact. Unfortunately, two years ago on this English date, uh, Tzipi and their daughter, uh, Noam were, were killed in a terrible car accident. And um, the date of this interview was really not time to be around that. But we, uh, we can't forget that, uh, that this is the date. And so Rabbi Rimmel, Ephraim, welcome to Back to Kins. Thank you very much. It's great to be back. It's almost exactly where I used to sit. Uh, this is a pretty good where I see behind you. It's, uh, it's uh -huh. Well, you see, now I get to be in the back of the shul, <laughs> where the expensive seats are. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> so, Ephraim, you know, what are you, what are you doing nowadays? Unfortunately, for those who don't know, Ephraim in the accident also uh, was severely wounded, and uh, he is in a wheelchair. Uh, his son, Itai, lost his leg, and he is also continuing to improve every day, and uh, see pictures of Itai, especially, uh, I think it must have been uh, from Chodesh Yergun of Bnei Akiva on yes, the basketball yes. court, rolling around and dancing in his chair, amazing ways that who would have ever thought. But what are you doing now? So it's, it really is crazy because for many years I was, uh, I was out of the house most of the day and I was, my last uh, job was to be the um, deputy director of um, Ezra, the other uh, youth movement that's not in Akiva. And, um, and now I'm home most of the time. I give uh, lectures um, of my experiences from the last two years, but I still go to physical therapy myself once a week. Uh, I go to Itai, I, I try at least once a week. So, and I try to be home with the kids, which I learned finished school at weird hours, like uh, two and four o'clock in the afternoon and not uh, when I get home. So I try to be home a little bit more. And it's uh, one of the many things that I need to get used to in this uh, new phase of life. But um, as you said before, the, seeing Itai and how, he, and how he's improving all the time, it really gives the strength to, uh, to get through it. And the lectures you're giving, I, I'm wondering, you know, who is bringing you to give lectures? What, what's the tone? What's the content of those lectures? So th these lectures are, are inspirational or chizuk in some way. Um, many high schools, mishivot uh, tichoniot, ulpenot, and uh, also communities who want to have a little, you know, a, an inspiring lecture of some sort of um, how to get through challenges or how to manage through challenges that uh, no one expects. Um, I have to say, I never thought I would give a, a lecture, uh, definitely not about something like this. Uh, but uh, it started actually from uh, a teacher in our community who um, asked me when I was still in rehab, she called me up one day and said, Ephraim, I would like you to come and give a talk to the girls in my, in my class. I said, okay, what would you like me to talk about? I thought she spoke to you maybe and you gave me back my smicha and she wanted me to give a parsha share. And I said, uh, sure. And she was like, no, no, you could talk about your experiences. So it started like that. And in the very quickly involved into something much bigger. Um, and it's really an unbelievable thing to see how many people um, who heard about the accident and had no idea where it, how it continued afterwards and how things have developed since. And I try to uh, explain or describe how I've gone through these past two years. Uh, some say it uh, gives them uh, the strength uh, to get through their challenges. So it gives me the uh, it gives me the will to continue and uh, give these talks. So just to pry a little bit more into this and to try to understand better, when you're meeting with teenagers and you're describing that terrible accident where the driver just plowed right into your car, and I remember being in Israel 
that week. You don't remember my being there, but I was there in the hospital with you and with Itai for a day. How do you give them the chizuk? In other words, what happened was it was a terrible tragedy. So I, I always describe how um, after I received the, the news of uh, what had happened when I finally woke up after two weeks, um, that I was trying to figure out what, how, am, how am I supposed to cope with all the, these different uh, challenges all at once? And um, me being in a wheelchair and, uh, and the children growing up without Sippy and Itai, who knows what's going to be with him and, and losing Sippy and Noam. And I, re, and I always say that I remember the um, famous line that Rav Amital as I used to say, the Rosh Hashem and Gush, when I learned there, um, he had a saying that, I'll say it in Hebrew first, She'ela tova adifa mitshuva lo tova. A good question is better than a not good answer. And I always remember that the first time he said that, I thought he was talking about the shear that he gave. He gave a shear and uh, someone gave a, an okay answer and he got uh, insulted in the name of the question that he, uh, that he gave. Um, and then he said it on Asdara uh, Betevet as Yom uh, Kadish Aklali, and he said that Rav uh, Mital, as a uh, survivor, said that that back in the day, they said that when um, that the founding of the state of Israel is the answer to the Shoah. He said, "I don't like that answer, not because he wasn't a Zionist or he had, there was a problem with his." Uh, um, with him, uh, uh, with his belief in Medinat Israel, but he said uh, the question is is stronger than any answer. And for the first time in my life, I have to deal with a question that's stronger than any answer. Um, I don't know why or what I'm supposed to do with it or how how this happened and how am I supposed to deal with it. But I understand that I don't understand, and I know that there are things that I won't know, and it's very weird because nowadays we're used to. Uh, writing everything on uh, Google and getting 30,000 answers in less than a second. And if you don't like the first answer, you uh, go down to the second or third one, whichever uh, fits your agenda. And I can't do that this time. There's no one I could uh, uh, try to ask how or what or where. And, um, but I understand that God has a plan. And um, when one day he'll, he'll tell it to me maybe, but until then I, I trust him and I trust his plan. And um, it means I have to uh, deal with uh, with the, the challenges that are in front of me, but I guess he thinks I, I can, so I do, or I try at least. And what kind of, what kind of questions do the uh, students have when you talk to high school students? I, I assume you may also talk to Khativa students. To the so I, I try to, I, I have to say that seventh and eighth grade is a little bit more complicated, um, but for high school kids, um, the questions are remarkable every time uh, they, some questions are always, uh, you know, are repeat themselves, but some are always new. Um, you know, it could go anywhere from if I forgive the, the driver um, or did I talk to him? Would I want to, would I want to meet with him? So I always say that, um, you know, I don't, I don't care about the driver and I don't, I'm not mad at him or not mad at him. I don't, uh, I don't think about him or spend time on him. I have enough to deal with. And if, for two reasons, reason number one, even if he gets a uh, thousand years in jail and a gazillion dollars of a fine, it's not gonna help me. And also um, going back maybe to the point before, Hashem wanted this to happen. Um, it's a hundred percent the driver's fault, no one, you know, the, the, the road was fine, the, the, the lights were fine, the, his brakes would work if he would use them. Um, but, you know, it was Hashem's plan, and I don't want to give credit to some crazy driver that he's the one who changed my life. So I don't, I don't deal with him. Um, and I don't uh, spend my time uh, thinking about what my um, response would be to him. Uh, but, you know, other questions could be, how did the other children take it? Or um, would I want to get married again? Or you know, all kinds of different questions that high school kids uh, could think of. Um, going back to work and um, how do I stay a believer in all different, um, different approaches. Uh, many, you could see sometimes the questions that are asked are, bent, are based off of questions are, that they deal with. And after you're done, 
with these presentations and you're leaving. Do you ever go back over those uh, presentations and say, I should have said this or I should have said that? Um, I think every once in a while there's a, I feel like there's a point that I could have made a little bit, uh, a little bit more clear. Um, I think every, even though I've said this over probably close to a hundred times by now, um, everyone comes out to be different. And even though the story doesn't change, the outcome doesn't change, uh, the results don't change. Um, but everyone comes out a little bit different because it depends on the vibe that's in the room or depends on um, who's the listening uh, crowd. Uh, it comes out different and sometimes different um, anecdotes come out uh, stronger than others. And sometimes uh, um, I, I forget one point and I use a different one. Um, but I think, I think in general, there's... Um, at the end of the day, there's enough um, different points that come up throughout the, the talk that I usually hit uh, all of them the right way. And, and usually there's enough time to, to fix if there's a problem uh, as I go. So tell me about the kids. Uh, Itai is still in rehab. Itai is still in rehab. Um, How much longer is, do they think he'll be there? It's a very good question. The, it seems that the next step, uh, literally and, and figuratively, in his in his uh, point, we're gonna do one more surgery uh, to straighten out uh, his leg, um, the leg that was um, amputated under the under the uh, knee is also very, call it just for simple words, crooked uh, above, so they need to fix it out a little bit in order for the prosthesis to work a little bit better. So that hopefully will happen in, within the next month. And if assuming that does, so probably two to three months uh, afterwards, um, he should be able to move at least to um, a day, uh, you know, going there two, three times a week and not uh, full time, uh, which, is, which is an unbelievable feat, especially uh, for those who remember where he was uh, today, uh, two years ago. Uh, I, I didn't obviously realize it at the time, that um, not only did they not think that he would uh, last uh, the day or the, the few couple of uh, that first week or two. And um, he's already able to, to, to walk uh, with a walker and hopping on one foot. And, and uh, he's able to uh, realize um, how good the bulls are and how bad the bears are. And he's back to following all the different uh, sports like he used to. And, and it's, it's really an unbelievable miracle that when we wrote on uh, the bencher in the, for his bar mitzvah, um, it, it really is true that there are, sometimes we think only about the miracles that were by him, but uh, we get reminders that there are miracles as well. And he is definitely a, a, a shining example to that. Um, the first time I had the courage to ask the doctor in rehab after he was there for a year, so it's almost a year and a half after the accident, uh, what's gonna be? And he asked me, I don't understand the question. I said, uh, you got him in a specific way. You know, it's been, he's already been here for a year. Now he's doing better. What's gonna be in three years, five years, 10 years? I said, Efrain, no one can tell you that because you shouldn't have been here. No one thought that he would, he would be able to do what he's doing now. So I, I can't predict what he's gonna do in, in 10 years from now because, you know, He's proven all of us doctors wrong as it is. So what's the point? So from that point, it really is uh, unbelievable. Leia is uh, going to have a bat mitzvah in a few months. So that uh, things, uh, things uh, progress all the time. She's in sixth grade. Uh, her bat mitzvah is right before Purim. Uh, Amichai is in fourth grade. He's nine. And uh, Hagel is going to be six, uh, right before Purim as well. So... Um, Really, uh, things you know, each one of them is doing well. Uh, each one of them copes with it uh, differently. Each one of them has uh, his uh, struggles and uh, his successes, um, and each one of them deals with it. I, I, I always, when people ask me how how are they how are they doing, I say, well, you know, based on the fact that they went to sleep with a babysitter and woke up to a social worker, they're doing pretty well because you know it, it's really a complicated thing to deal with, but they um, do dealing with it very well. I, I couldn't have asked for it to be uh, any better to the, under the circumstances. So your house was totally remodeled to allow it to be handicapped accessible. 
Yes. Uh, Israel knows how to do this, unfortunately, very, very well. And um, I understand your car will eventually be coming. Yes. Uh, so to get the house to, for the house, yeah, I had to do a, you know, even for I only had six steps going into the house. So I have to do a ramp. The ramp is almost, uh, I think it's, uh, if I do the math uh, to feed correctly, it's about 60 feet long. Uh, for it, wow. For it, right, 22, 24 meters would come out to be a little bit more like 60 feet, maybe even 70, because of it, for it, to, it has to have a specific angle for it to be, I could do it by myself, you know, I, I, so. Um, and there's an elevator and there's, uh, obviously doing the bathrooms and the kitchen. It's a very, it's, uh, it was a very big project, uh, which, uh, thank God it really, really works. Um, the, the OT and the, and my uh, PT, when they came to visit the house before, and when they came to visit the house after they were like, Hey, this is, you know, this is the way to do it. He did a very good job. So I'm very, uh, lucky and thankful from that point. And the car. The car is a very interesting issue. The, uh, uh, everyone told me that that was going to be the most complicated uh, thing to deal with. And I said, okay, how complicated can it be? You know, I had to get money from the insurance. It's more complicated. So how much, uh, uh, and it, it is because the, the good point is that Israel and social security of Israel uh, gives you a car. It pays for the car, pays for learning how to drive a car with your hands. Uh, pays for the accessories. It's it's a lot of money. Uh, it's a lot of uh, bureaucracy. It's three different uh, government uh, agencies. So obviously that adds to the uh, lack of efficiency. But at the end of the day, I get a full car with an elevator into the car, and you know and all the accessories of uh, driving um, with a steering wheel that has a, a thing on it that you could steer it with one hand. And have uh, the 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 gas and uh, brake pedal as a stick. So basically, you have to do like that. It's like it, it's it's it is it's a little complicated to figure it out. It 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 um, I needed to basically learn how to drive again, but um, it's doable. So hopefully, in the next few weeks, it will arrive, and that will uh, then I could really be a little bit more uh, independent and uh, drive wherever wherever I want to. So I, when you were in Chicago, you were giving Sherim left and right, whether it was the, whether it was the Dafyomi or it was giving Sherim in Parashat Tashavua and everything else. Are you still able to give those Sherim? Are you, do you have opportunities to do it? So thank God to Zoom. Uh, yes, I, I do give, uh, I don't give as much as I used to before, but I, I do have an opportunity to uh, still give a, par a weekly Parsha Shir, um, most uh most weeks I am able to, to do it. Um, and anytime there's an opportunity to do a little bit more than I, I tried to do that. Um, COVID from that point to really uh, was able to bring me back into the ball game faster. I think otherwise just waiting uh, for the car or waiting, you know, to go to a place that's uh, accessible would be a little bit more complicated. Uh, but um, for example, right now I'm able to be in Chicago without leaving uh, my uh, dining room. So from that point, uh, I could be uh, almost anywhere. Uh, but I, I have to say that the the effect of giving these talks, for example, in person, as opposed to uh, giving them on Zoom is is very different. Because you know, a partial share at the end of the day, I don't have to see you. I could hear the share and it's good enough. But I think... Um, the uh, the tight the seeing someone in a wheelchair um, giving the talk as opposed to hearing someone is not the same. Uh, but I try I try as much as I can. Um, I probably should be able to do more. Well, I have a feeling also it's not just them seeing you. It's you're able to interact with the shayur much differently when they're in person. Correct. 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 Uh, you know, it's it's weird talking to uh, um, even if there's thirty people on the Zoom. But, you know, some have their uh, cameras off and, you know, I'm sure you deal with that in school a little bit. Uh, some have their cameras off, some are unmuted. Some people should be muted, but they don't know how to unmute themselves. Uh, so uh, uh, it, it is a little bit, it is a little different, but um, it, it gives them many opportunities, which, um, which I'm really thankful for. I, you, know, you said before how I was part of the call before. And um, now, due to uh, Zoom, I'm able to be a little bit more a part of that as well. So that's, uh, you know, flying to Chicago is, uh, besides uh, COVID issues, is a little bit more complicated. 
So um, this is a great opportunity. Have you been able to get away at all, whether with the kids or just to be, um, to a little break? There was one. There was one weekend uh, that I actually w w went away uh, with. Uh, I mean, I didn't really go away. Away. It was with. Uh, there was a Shabbaton from uh, Ezra right after I got out of. Um, rehab the kids went to, to my parents I think for the weekend or my in-laws I don't remember already so I was without the kids for a weekend um otherwise uh, I, I you know every once in a while a day here a day there with the kids go away but um I, I think I've slept in my house probably every night because at the end of the day um the accessibility issue is is always uh, you know everyone anytime you ask someone if the place is accessible they say yes and then you, well there's only one more step or two steps and it's uh, just the bathroom isn't and just this isn't and so it's much easier just to, to stay home um it's getting better all the time but even even um i think any building um or any time that a place is being uh Try, tries to be accessible, you know, they, the, the person who's doing the accessibility usually walks. Uh, and therefore, he thinks it's much more accessible than it really is because the ramp, uh, it seems okay, it's a ramp, there's no steps, you should be able to push it up. And then, you know, it's a mountain, it's not a ramp. Um, so it does all kinds of small little things and small little challenges. But um, I'm assuming that once the car comes around and once the kids get a little bit older and, you know, even when Itai comes home, it'll be... Uh, much something that we will do more often. And in, in terms of, I, I don't want to say long term because no one knows long term, but the next step, are you looking to go back into to working with Ezra? Are you looking to become professional, inspirational speaker? Are you looking um, to do something entirely different or to be the advocate for the handicapped to teach people how to really make things accessible? It's a, it's, it's a great question. I, I don't think... Um... I didn't, I didn't make any long-term uh, plans from that uh, point because, as I said before, um, two years ago in a day, I didn't think I would be where I am today. Um, I don't think of myself as an inspirational or motivational speaker. Um, on the other hand, going back to do a, a job that I really liked but is not very, um, you know, to be, uh, to, to run a youth movement is more complicated when you're in a wheelchair because kids should be able to run around and play and, and you know go up a few steps into wherever they're um, uh, they are. So it's a little bit more complicated to do that. Or, but to go back to a regular, boring office uh, the, the job also is not uh, something that uh, I would be interested in. So it's a question. It really is a good question. What what I will do when uh, when I grow up now? Um, I'm assuming that uh, the, until the end of this year. Uh, you know, until Itai comes home and uh, uh, Harel is ready to finish, will finish kindergarten. So, you know, I'll, I'll try to keep it the way it is now. And then maybe next year we could uh, go back to a somewhat of a, um, I don't know if it'll be routine, but uh, as, as good as a routine as it could be. You know, I, I know your parents and your in-laws have been very, very helpful. I actually think your parents may be watching this. So I'm going to uh, just comment that everyone has been helping tremendously, but they've also been your biggest fans. And you're, you, know, you have a, uh, a fan club around the world for what you've I, I, le Yes, lately, um, the, now that COVID, well, for a, a few minutes there, uh, got a little bit better. So I was able to see lots of uh, friends from Chicago that were in Israel the last uh, couple of weeks. I thought that you guys were opening a Kinza Middle East uh, as well. Uh, the, to, to the how many people were here, and it was great to get to see everyone. Um, and it really, um, besides my family, which obviously I am, the the, the gratitude is not something that I can uh, express enough of. But the 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 amount of people that as you said, uh, worldwide are rooting for us and, and davening for us and thinking of us and sending messages and calling. And when they come for, a, even if it's for a four or five day short visit, they do everything they can to, to visit us and see us. It really gives a lot of, um, really gives a lot of strength because, you know, you would assume that right now you would, I would feel the most um, isolated, alone, um, but 
I am more, I have more people surrounding me now uh, than ever. And it really gives a lot of, uh, a lot of strength and, and, and it gives uh, a tremendous amount of um, knowing that there are so many people out there that uh, really care and really, uh, just today I got a message from uh, a student of Tippies from uh, the Academy who remembered that today was uh, the day and uh, she just wanted to reach out and say thank you for what Tippy did and that she's still thinking of us and uh, doubting for us. And, um, you know, I have not in touch with her during the, you know, I, the last time we messaged was almost a, a year ago, but it's, it's those small little things every once in a while that really gives you, uh, you know, that you're not alone and it really gives a lot of, uh, a lot of strength. Well, if I can, by the way, part of the reason for that, I think there's three elements. One is the impact you and Sippy had on people's lives before the accident, uh, whether in Chicago or in Israel. The, the very fact that you're not, that you're finding some way to be inspired yourself. So the people don't walk away from you saying with a downer, but they walk away from you feeling better. And the mere fact that you're also open to receiving those kinds of, of comments and calls. And, and even these kind of questions like I'm, share, like I'm sharing with you today, that you're taking it. it this is a compliment to both Tzipi Shalom and to you as well for what you've been able to do. And uh, take it, take thank the compliment. Thank you. Know? <laughs> thank you, thank you. So when are you coming to Chicago already? So as anyone who remembers me knows that uh, when I was able to walk uh, in the snow in Chicago, I didn't do a very good job at that. Um, uh, almost, uh, it was, uh, I think it was February 1st, when that big uh, snowstorm in 2011. So um, I, I think I'll wait until uh, the snow ends. Uh, the winter of Chicago uh, will end, and then maybe, uh, uh, maybe I'll be able to come for a visit. Uh, that I, it's something that I uh, would love to uh, get back to see uh, everyone in Chicago, and um, hopefully, uh, once that uh, once that season uh, starts, we could uh, really think of that. Well, the snow hasn't started, and I was told <laughs> it's going to be a very warm winter for Chicago. Uh -huh. I'm sure in, in Chicago terms, I'm sure it's, you know, like it's already only 20 below. It's very warm. Listen, the difference is you read from left to right. If you would read from right to left, the temperature would be very, very nice. <laughs> I'll, I'll try that next time. So just to go on one word, our time is almost up, if right, but very from your time in Chicago working with people, what do you think was the most memorable thing that happened? So there's a show wow. in Chicago. Um, I think just the, even though I, I had family in Chicago, I still have family in Chicago and I thought I knew uh, Chicago to a point, um, the knowing the people and getting to, uh, um, interact in day-to-day -day life and not just on a two week uh, vacation by Bobby and Zadie in the summer, um, I think, uh, really taught us a lot of, the Jewish community in Chicago, and uh, how much um, it really is an unbelievable um, community that I think the proof is that we're having this conversation seven years uh, after we returned. Um, I think uh, taught us a lot about um, the community there and how much uh, we need to do as much as we can to uh, strengthen the connection between the communities in Israel and uh, in the, the United States. And uh, we tried to do what we could, and uh, hopefully we can continue. And for, for me, one of the most memorable pieces, and I don't even know if you remember this, was when we had it at Kins one time, Rav Shechter was speaking, and he gave a she'ur uh, on Medinat Yisrael, on the halachic sta status of the state of Israel. Uh, and, Vayera, the second year I was, the first year I was there, oh, I remember. And I remember your comment you, after he had said, that really the state of Israel should be considered a Malchut Yisrael, a, a kingdom of the Jewish people, and maybe we should celebrate Yom Atzmut on Rosh Chodesh Nisan. You walked out and you said to me, I don't think I've ever heard a Rosh Yeshiva from Yeshivat Hezder speak that way. So Rav Shechter really is a, uh, well, Rav Shechter for a reason, that is correct. Yeah, so I, I just remember when we were able to, to do a little bit of Zionism that even got you, that even got you surprised. Well, Ephraim, our time literally is up. 
I appreciate your time. I thank you for, for being here, but even more for the friendship and for all the Torah you've taught. Uh, we do need a sub for the Dafiomi from time to time. So if you're ready to come in, you know, on a moment's notice, we won't make you quarantine at all in the United States, unlike what's happening. Well, 7, 7 15 in the morning uh, is uh, 3 30, 15 in the afternoon. No, no problem. Yeah, no problem. You can catch the flight from the night before and you'll be there. Now. It's a direct flight. You can make the exactly. seven. Oh, right, right, right. I'll, I'll, I'll look into it. Okay. Please send our regards to everybody. Thank you so Will much do. for your time. And Sipi's Nishama, Noah's Nishama should have an aliyah, even though it's not the yard site today, it's the English day today, which just happened by chance. And uh, we remember them and we remember everything you have contributed in the past and will continue to do. Please, God. Send our best to the kids. Thank you very much, Rabbi. Hanukkah Sameach. Hanukkah Sameach. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.